Hey everyone, welcome to a non-40k Thursday tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this Signar Stormclad model. I began by priming the entire model blue using Army Painter Navy Blue Colored Primer. And to make it easier to paint, as well as to play the game, I magnetized the arms so that I can remove them in case the arms get damaged. Using an airbrush, I base coated all of the blue armor areas using the aptly named Signar Base Paint. I also use this paint on the banner, uh, focusing more on the center. Then once again using the airbrush, I built up a gradient of highlights um, with the perfectly named Signar Highlight. And on his banner, I focus more on the outside uh, four-cornered edges, uh, so that I can build up a gradient of darkness towards the center. Then I repeated this process by building up a gradient of, of light blues, adding white uh, to Signar Highlight first, with a one-to-one -one mix of Signar Highlight to white, and then again with a one-to-two mix of Signar Highlight highlight to white, and then a 1 to 3 mix of signal highlight to white. Just a little bit more at a time, and each time that I did it, I would do a smaller and smaller area, building towards where the light hits the model. And on the banner, I would focused more towards the, uh, the four corners of the banner. As I said, building a, a gradient of darkness to lightness as you go from the inside of the banner to the outside of the banner. And here is what the final gradient looked like on the Stormcloud. Next, to bring back the detail in the recesses, I added an armor wash. Uh, if you don't have an armor wash, you can just use non oil by Games Workshop. And I put this into all the crevices um, of the blue armor. And this will get into the crevices and make them really dark and bring back a lot of the detail of the, uh, the blue armor. And to add a little bit more detail to his clothing, I added a little bit of blue shade or ink uh, to just the recesses of his clothing. Next, I painted all the silvers on the model uh, Cold Steel. If you don't have Cold Steel, I recommend Iron Breaker by Citadel. This was a particularly long process, seeing as the majority of the model is either blue, which I used to paint with the airbrush, or a variant of silver, uh, which included the shoulder pads, the, uh, the pole for the banner, his exhaust pipes, his back, um, a lot of his knee pads, his uh, shoulders were silver. Um, basically, the majority of the model was either silver or blue. So it was a lot of painting for this part. Um, so it took me a little while. And here's what the uh, the model looked like after I'd done all the cold steel on it. Uh, as you can see, all the silver iron and blue on it. I think it's starting to look really sweet at this point. I uh, just need to add a little bit of depth to, uh, to all the silver areas now. Then to give some detail to all these metal areas, I gave them all an armor wash. Yeah, if you don't have an armor wash, I recommend using non-oil by Citadel once again. This uh, wash got in all the recesses and gave all the silver areas um, much more detail. It made them look really nice um, and a little bit older of an appearance, which is what I was kind of going for with all the, uh, the metal areas. This step, once again, took a little bit of time as there were, once again, a lot of silver or metal parts to give this wash too. However, it was really worth it, as it really did bring out a lot of the really nice detail in this model. Um, 
War Machine has such nice models and washes like these are great for bringing out these nice details. Then to bring out the edge details in all these metal areas, I gave them two more consecutive dry brushes. The first one with cold steel again. Uh, if you know cold steel, I once again re recommend Iron Breaker by Citadel or GW. Uh, the, this first one will bring a lot of the edge details um, once again. And as I said, just do a very light dry brush over the areas so that uh, it just makes the edge details pop and gives it a little more depth to the metal areas. And then I did a second, even lighter dry brush using Quicksilver. Uh, if you don't have Quicksilver, I recommend uh, Rune Fang Steel or Necron Compound by GW. And I just did a little subset of these areas and I tried to focus specifically on the areas in which uh, when the model is standing up, that light would hit on the model so that it gives a little bit of a lighting effect on it. I then base coated all of the jewels on the model, as well as the inside of the sword, with Signar Highlight, which will provide a nice deep blue color, um, which we'll bring out with a couple uh, uh, highlights after. I then highlighted the jewels slightly with uh, just lines along the bottom part, as well as uh, highlighted the inside of the sword with Arcane Blue. With the inside of the sword, I tried to keep the uh, just the insides arcane blue and keep the recesses uh, signar highlight. I then added a little white dot on each of the jewel parts opposite of the arcane blue line which will give the illusion that all these jewels are very shiny. For the gold areas, I actually used GW's Gehenna's gold um, because I ran out of molten bronze which is the P3 equivalent of that color. So I would primarily recommend you use Molten Bronze, but if you don't have that, I'd recommend using Gehenna's Gold. I then gave all of these areas a black brown wash, which will get into all the recesses, make them look really nice, bring out all the details in the gold areas, as well as give them a slightly older, dirtier appearance, which is the same thing I tried to go for in the silver areas. When the washes were dry, I highlighted all these gold areas with Rulik Gold. If you don't have Rulik Gold, I recommend Gehenna's Gold by GW. I tend to focus more on the outer edges um, and left the recesses, as well as the more shaded parts. Um, the original color plus the shading, uh, the black-brown shade.
I then turned my attention to the symbols on the banner by first painting them rucksack tan, which is a very light brown, which is a great uh, foundation color for yellows, uh, which we'll go over with in just a moment. I then went over all the symbols with uh, Cygnus Yellow, which is a very bright yellow, but it's very thin. Uh, so to accomplish a nice yellow color, I went over with uh, two or three coats of Gehenna's, uh, sorry, Cygnus Yellow over the uh, rucksack tan. I then highlighted uh, these symbols by going over the outer edges, uh, so it's an edge highlight, with a 1 to 1 mix of Cygnus Yellow to White. And finally I painted the sword handle, Rucksack Tan, and then gave it also an armor wash which will bring out the little divots uh, details in it. And after all the model was painted, I decided to give it all a satin varnish. Since this is a giant piece of metal, it's a pewter model, and it weighs a lot, so they tend to scratch or fall over very easily, I gave it a nice satin varnish, a couple small, small thin coats, so that it will be protected um, for the future and when I play with it. And that's it, you now know how I painted up my Stormclad model for my Signar army. Overall I'd have to say that I was actually very happy with the way that it turned out. It's not an amazingly hard model to paint, but I really like it and I think I did a good job on it. I really love the, the gradients on the armor and how all the golds turned out as well as the silvers. Um, I really love the Signar models, especially just all the War Machine models. Privateer Press has done an amazing job with these models and I really love the new plastic slash resin models that have come out recently. Um, yeah, nothing but positive things to say about it. I hope you enjoy my tutorial. Um, as always, thank you to all you awesome people out there for watching my videos. I really hope that you enjoyed this non 40k tutorial. Uh, please like the video, leave any comments you would like on the video in the comment section below and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.